So what is the first thing that comes to mind when you're asked about Persona 3? Well, yeah, I mean, I would have said the talking robot, but okay, sure. Now that's comedy. Finally, Edge Sona. So Persona 3 Fez is all about death, toasters, non-controllable party members, and of course, Academy Award winning writing. More like stupid, ace defective. <laughs> And after doing full videos on Persona 4 and 5, I'm not doing another sampler of the game like before. This time, I'm going all in. I guess we'll see. Also, I did put some modifications to make the game just to look a whole lot nicer. So my history with Persona 3 is weird because I first heard about it after watching the Persona 4 anime and was like, what the heck? Persona 3 the movie? But it wasn't in English. And you know how important English voice acting is for me. Guinea pig. Well, let's start! Oh god, why is it so blue? So after a typical anime opening where nothing edgy happens, oh no, she burnt her bread. Where our main character gets off a train and at the stroke of midnight, the entire suburb turns green! Oh, hello there! Did you hear that? I'm sure it's nothing. As we listen to edgy music and enter our new accommodation, a hotel! So do we get free breakfast every morning? Hang on, there's no service! Ah, don't do that! <laughs> you want me to sign a contract for free breakfast? Okay, fine. But I'm taking the shampoo back home, buddy! Alright, give them the totally legally binding name, Zeus Ram. No one can escape time. Oh. Well, he disappears as we meet, uh, Brunette and Redhead, the latter who stops Brunette from blasting our heads off. Wait, why exactly do you have a gun? Huh? Um, well, it's sorta like a hobby. Gee, what a nice hobby. So she it takes us to our room stinks. on the first floor. Hey, so room service is free, right? Good night. Well, it's time for the first day of school. Hello? Please answer the door or I'll get in trouble. Eh, uh, I don't really feel like it. Open the door or I'm gonna- And at school, our homeroom teacher. Hey, are you related to Yukari? Come on, it's not funny. In 1999, that was what, uh, 10 years ago? Your parents- <gasps> I'm sorry. I've been so busy I didn't have time to read this beforehand. F. Thanks for the sympathy. And at school, we meet the new best friend character. Me? I'm Junpei Iori. And as you'll see, there's a reason this game makes him the bestest of best friends. Believe it or not, I'm Junpei Iori. So it seems like there's a rumor that Yukari and I are dating, just because we walked to school together on the first day. Is that all it takes? Seriously, don't say anything about last night, alright? Last night? Um... Fox through your windows, you dumb ho- You the man! Well, nothing really happened as with all Persona games. Seriously, why did they always take so long to get properly started? But back at the hotel, we meet another resident, Akihiko, who lives across the hall. Will you be okay on your own? Don't worry, I'm just getting a little practice. But after that, I can- What the heck is with this place? And the head teacher here is this guy. Good evening. God, I wanna rip that goatee right off. My Yakutsuki then tells us- You should go to bed early. Guess that's just an Atlas game trope, huh? But he does this because at midnight, everyone transforms. Transmogrifies into coffins. And if you are wandering around not asleep, the demons attack you. So that when you wake up, you fall victim to the apathy syndrome, i.e. a zombie. However, we, the main character, might have special powers. He's asleep now. Dark hour occurs every day at 12 midnight. You could Why are you explaining this to us? We already know that! And while the three argue on what's the code word to enter the building, transmogrifies, we try to sleep. SECURITY! So in our dream we meet Igor, the man of the long... Candlestick? You'll get used to his lame jokes. Who is in the velvet room, or velvet elevator more like, where he is the one who manages our personas or manifestations of the heart. Wow, what an amazing service. It's, it's all free, right? I only ask one thing in return. You will come- So after a few more days of suffering from- Transmogrifies- We find that Akihiko, you know the boxing guy, gets attacked during the dark hour and is injured by a huge demon! This thing is huge! Yukari bursts through the door, huh? saying we have to get out of here! Quick, onto the roof! Wait, there's a roof? Oh. Oh! 
So Yukari goes to shoot the demon. No, no way. Aim that away. But we grab the gun and shoot to summon our persona. Which now means we can fight the blobs of doom. And collapse. Upon waking up, Yukari tells us that one week has passed. How much sleep do you need? More than you'll ever know. And dreaming once more, we meet Eagle. Power. That power. Well, Yukari tells us that what we did was use a persona to save the day. And those creatures you defeated are Shadow, our enemy. And also... I'm sort of like you. What? My dad died in Well, that doesn't really explain why you like me. My mom and I aren't exactly on good terms. Oh, you mean our teacher. I see, I see. So, yeah, pretty much her deal is that her dad died 10 years ago during an accident. Bye. And now, transmogrified dude finally does the old JRPG lore dump, saying this group here are called Specialized Extracurricular Execution Squad, or C's. As every night, there exists a 25th hour called the Dark Hour, more like Green Hour. Oh, hello there. Who keeps saying that? Anyway, only a select few like the gang here don't turn into coffins and instead can summon personas to fight the shadows. And Akutsuki here <laughs> is the teacher who oversees this club, which begs the question, how is this school club approved and who let them stay at a hotel every night? And every few nights we awake to see, god damn it, not this kid again. Waken to your power. I'll be watching you. No, you won't. And I guess to everyone's surprise, Hold up. Junpei stays over as he has the potential. For real? <laughs> I'm not surprised by your reaction. And now we have to investigate Tartarus. Wait, what's that? Yes, this infinite tower is home to the shadows, and it grows out of our school each dark hour. It's the killer. Do not die. Oh, sounds like toothpaste. As a Kutsuki, As you know, I can't summon a persona. So instead wants us to work our way up the tower for him. For real? And we get picked as the group's leader, much to Junpei's annoyance. I know, right? How will we even give orders? We never speak! Actually, we do in battle and it sounds very similar to someone else. Oh yeah? But first, we gotta go. This is the door to the Velvet Elevator. That is why you must be made aware of power. All right, all right, I get it. I like it more than Kabeni and Markova. Sheesh. It's like zero. So here is where you get to manage your personas you grab and fuse new ones, as well as later on talking to this ominous lady to do requests for her to get items and such. But for now, we exit. Huh? What door? And look upon the entrance. He's just standing there. Well, we enter and notice that Yukari is kind of mad at Mitsuru. Gee. I wonder why. Oh, I see why. And thus begins the dungeon calling. Now, unlike the other Persona games I played, this is very repetitive in its design. In that, it's pretty much all you'll see, apart from slight wall changes. You just run around these generated floors, attack the blobs to get an advantage in battle, or get hit, which is more likely because they move so fast, and then begins the turn-based combat. However, in Persona 3 Fez, you got an interesting feature. You can't control the party members. Eh, it's not that bad in the early game, all you can do is just pick a persona to use and try to get a type advantage attack to knock down the enemies and when all are down you can do an all out attack. It's very primitive in the early game, especially if you're coming from the more recent entries. Now like Persona 4 you also get shuffle time where you gotta pick from the rotating cards. It's totally not hard. This is how you get new personas, more experience and so on. Well we find an access point that takes us back down to the first floor. Wow. Power. And now we return to school where we learn that Mitsuru is a student council president and that her family owns the school. What? That's kind of a big deal. Just how rich are you? I guess we'll see. Then realize if you're late with homework, you have to buy Yukari's mom cake. You're joking, right? And after school we see... Man, take a look at that. Chick magnet. Yes, Akihiko is very popular with the ladies, but will instead go... He's so handsome. Move it, bitch. I have this strange feeling that someone's watching me. It's probably nothing, dude. As Akiko takes us to Palatina Mall, where after school, we can buy stuff for the dungeons, like weapons from the police officer. I'm only doing what I think is right. And yeah, you can actually buy any weapon for yourself. If you want a bow, sure. Great sword, go nuts. But be warned, it will change your swipe speed. Which I painfully learned. 
No, seriously, these goos are so quick. You will get enemy advantages a lot. Now in the dungeon, you also got some unique things that the other Persona games don't do. One is fusion spells. When you have two specific Personas, you can do a fusion attack. And you can also split up the party in the dungeon. This lets them pick up items or even find the exit for you to instantly move up a level. Yes, you're allowed to just send them out while you twiddle your thumbs at the entrance as they find the exit for you. Although I wouldn't really rely on this AI. And this also means when you run around alone now in fights, you're still alone. They don't come to help you. you Someone help me. It also means that they miss out on experience and so it's very tactical. Do you risk all this to maybe find the stairs quicker? Now on the other side, as usual with Persona games, it's the daily high school life. With a calendar system giving you things to do every day, like answer questions in school or sleep in school. And yes, don't worry, I know all the answers because some guy is feeding me the right things to say through these wireless headphones I found on the ground after leaving the station. It was very odd, it just had my name on it, but didn't say who it was from. Oh, well. This actually raises your stats like charm, knowledge, which you need to rank up your friendships. I mean, social links. Gotta gamify making friends, right? And those friend links will buff up your personas you use. So say a friend with this arcana will give you more experience if you fuse a demon in said arcana. Meaning making friends make you stronger. Plus you need high stats here to even start to talk to people like Yukari. Yeah. A main character! You can't even talk to her unless your charm is high enough! On Mitsuru, you need to have high knowledge! But that's not all! Because you can't even do social links with the male party members. Huh? I'm as shocked as you are! Edgy boy here is way more of a player than Chad Yu! Meaning there's no social links with Junpei or Akihiko. No. So that means for the majority of the early game, you have to make do with... Uh... Kenji. Shut up and eat your expensive ramen. His deal is that he wants to ask a teacher out. I don't know why, but I think this might be a bad idea. Ugh, that was like a deja vu or something. And yes, he replaces the best bro friend you get early game. Dude, I heard there's a rumor you're dating Yukari. It is what it is. Now back in the dungeon, I found it so cool how despite the harder difficulty, with you not being able to control the party, you can actually heal completely up. When you go back to the start with these access points, you never have to worry about running out of items to heal the SP when you use magic attacks. Just find the access point, heal, and go back, because you get checkpoints every few floors or so after defeating a mini boss. However, watch out, because this game has a feature where... You get tired. Man, this is so real. You and your party can get tired from battling too much. And also you can get tired from doing activities during the day, which means stuff like going to the toilet somehow fixes it up, or sleeping at night instead of studying can cure it by the next day. It means even some days you're raring to go, but your teammates are all dead tired. Yes, your friends are too tired to hang out with you. Persona 3 is so relatable! Now after school time, you get to go to many hotspots to increase stuff like your social stats or just random things like praying at this shrine will increase your experience in the dungeons that night. But then after that, you also get an evening section where you can only run around Palatina Mall, which has things like... Uh... Club? Wait, where are we letting the bodies hit? Hey, this looks familiar. Or back at your hotel, and it's at least a cool thing you get to wander the entire building. Although there's not much to do. Most times the party just talk about game hints, not so much in their backstory. Wow, dude. You need to be hot to pull off a nurse's uniform, and you're definitely. Ahem. <laughs> Not. I don't know, Jinpei, I've seen her nurse's outfit and she's... Drop dead gorgeous. Emphasis on the dead, oh god no! But then pretty much all you can do is either spend money on the arcade or food to buff stats or you study in your room. And at the start... Oh my, hotels are so expensive! Why am I so poor? I can barely afford this Starbucks coffee! So that meant I would either just study or go to bed in the evening. Because all the activities cost money. I was too poor to explore the nightlife. Episode 3 is so relatable. Well, as to the social links, you got this track guy who was just meh. But if you rank him up, you get to talk to Yuko. It was also pretty meh so far. Oh, is that Quacky? Quacky will consume your soul after you consume his burgers. Wait, duck burgers? Or talk to this old couple. Back in my day, we used to own pet leaves. Okay, I'm leaving. No, wait. If you rank three us, you can meet the French guy. French guy, are you legit? Oh wow, he's legit. I'm the current time for Team Denial. And back at school. It is my firm belief. Also, why the heck do we run like this? Hello. 
Mitsuru begs us to join the student council because she has too much work to do, and so you have to sign paperwork to join. I don't have to read the terms and conditions, right? Okay then. And what was amusing with this is that the banter in the dorm actually changes, based on the events that just happened. Also, if it sounds like I'm just jumping all over the place, it's kinda just how accurate to how the early game felt. As opposed to the later Persona games, there's no real villain here, it's just fight the demons each night, you don't have to save any classmates or anything like that, it's just tartar sauce all the way. But not even that, because they stop you after a certain floor each month, which only opens up after a certain calendar day. It's very different in execution to the later entries. Well now Junpei, the bro character you can't even bro, gives you a free online role playing game that lets you play for free up till heaven. Heaven sword because he's bored of it. Seriously, man, giving you free game and you can't even take him out to ramen. Why am I wasting money on you? And so you can play this on your days off. Are you a nub? Your name is Maya. Deja vu. I don't think I get that reference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you can't figure out how old I am, Roth. Well, how do you do, fellow kids? So yeah, this is actually the most fun social link to talk to, with Maya, who complains about a job. I'm drunk. XD. Man, she really talks like how I message people. <laughs> In fact, she was so fun to talk to. During the week off school, I was meant to study for exams. I spent three days chatting with her. Yes, I know. It was so addicting to chatting to someone in Final Fantasy XIV. Wait, this sounds dangerous. My edge sense is tingling. Somewhere. This will lead to bad things. Oh, but it's got an asterisk, so that won't lead me astray, right? Nothing bad can happen when you pick the asterisk choice, right? LML nade. I'll see you get called into the school hospital to see Akihiko, but instead find... Beanie Man. I'm sure it's fine, right? He's just a friend of Akihiko. Beanie Man are trustworthy, right? And now you get to meet the infamous Elizabeth, Igor's attendant, or as she's more well known as... LP. So LP does the fusing for us to get stronger demons, but also has these requests to get items like outfits. That was easy. Yeah, this is so cursed. Is... Is that Guy Fieri? Wicked. And we'll ask you on dates to show her the real world. So as we reach May, the game reminds you that this hotel ain't all it's cracked up to be. Your mother never loved you! What kind of welcome is that? And then on the way to the shrine to pray for that demon to leave my room, I spotted her. Oh, maybe she's lost. I should help her find her parents. Wells, 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 look who's we got here. Excuse me? Not many people approach the dawn of Tatsumi Pot. Hey, is that a Red Bull? We don't take that, I paid money for it! Well, that weird interaction done. We can finally start the big boss, as we see Mitsuru and Akihiko scanning for demons when suddenly... The reading is too big. And since the boxer is injured, us three will have to do it. Junpei is still mad that we're in charge, as we have to head out into the real world during the dark hour to fight this boss. It's not in Tata Source. No electronic equipment is operable during the dark hour. Wait, no electricity during this hour. But your bike, the radio... It's special. Okay then. This is it, right? As the demon is on the monorail and we have to jump on, but Junpei, wanting to prove that he's the man, runs off ahead. Stupid! Where we get a time limit and we have to chase him before reaching the front with the boss. Atlas and their boss designs? The so we fight it and it's fairly straightforward. It's probably quicker if I can actually control my party. But we win! We Wait, it's still moving! Oh no! However, we stop it by guessing which was the right lever. Ultimate lucky student here. Tomorrow's headlines. Do you have anything to drink? Boy, am I gonna be sore tomorrow. Oh, because your persona is the bike? I think? Why is it tiring for you? Well, yeah, the boss is defeated and we just continue on. There's no real character growth or lore, yep. Well, I tell the track guy his fashion is bad and our relationship gets stuck in a rut. Guy friends, am I right? You also can now fix the control room, which lets you view secret recordings of the other residents. <laughs> What's with me today? I'm on a roll. One should always wear bright clothing at night. Otherwise, the shadows could make it dangerous to walk near traffic. And I pay a visit to Maiko. My father once burnt his mouth on these. Oh. Because I shoved too many in there since he didn't know when to keep his mouth shut. Uh, okay. So why exactly do you need me around? I just want my money back for the Red Bull. Wells, if you want some money back, I ain't got it. But I got a little operation that might pay off handsomely. And I'll call you when the time is right. But for now, take me to Ducky Burgers. 
Oh yeah! So now it's almost exam time and the party won't want to go into tartar sauce because they're studying! Come on man, studying won't help us dumbos. Alright Junpei's in, Yukari you coming too? Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, that's why you're my favorite! Jeez. We're in the dungeons, I also learned the best way to make money, since I was still starving each night, and that is with the shuffle time. You farm the low level floors and then pick the money option to rack up coin. Also the low level demons you fight, they really are scared. But back home, make sure you don't even attempt to study while tired because it's an actual waste of time. I mean, yeah, while well, you're tired, you won't remember anything. And so begins the very easy exam. And so ends the very easy exams. Gee, this school stuff ain't too hard when you got someone telling you all the answers in your ear. So now Akihiko says he might have found a new student who might have a persona, a girl called Fuka. But she might be too weak to cut it. So instead, Akihiko says he's fit to fight with us. I've been waiting for this. He's fun. I've been waiting for this. Also, you can now get cursed cards in the shuffle time, which speeds up death. What? It speeds up old age? Oh god, death is gonna kill me! Also do note if you split up and they are fighting demons, they will leave your party when you move on to the next floor. So yeah, just wait or help them out. Also, Ego, my man, I know you're a rookie in this game. But come on! This is not the demon I asked for! Ew. Also, if they die, they like, die. Th their body just sits there. I oh, know, you can't rewind. And back to the social stuff, Maya is now very mad at her job, or well, more bored of with it, and reveals that she is a teacher. Man, this feels so strange. I really have a bad feeling about this. Ah, uh, well, I'm sure it's fine. She's fun to talk to. And I mean, she's probably in some far away overseas school. She couldn't even do anything to me. Anyway, the next day at school, I found it funny how Yukari's mum, the teacher, is just so chill with her teaching. She will give you credit if you just wrote anything down on the exam. And we see World Cup diving. I find a Mitsuru simp. Okay, that's kind of weird. And I find a simp of some other random NPC. And I give some guy food and don't tell him it's poisoned. And also... Oh god, not Quacky again! Duck meat will take over the food industry! <laughs> now when you reach the blocked area at the end of Tartar Source, you get these lab documents which reveal that there's a Kirijo lab somewhere on the island. Ah, Kirijo. Would you happen to know anything about this Mitsuru last name or first name? I never know Japanese names, Kirisho? I guess we'll see. Well, a few little things I noticed, like how in the hotel on this one day, I took to the TV and they mentioned an earthquake and the screen started to shake. Just a random little event that had no meaning, I think. Or how you can use the reception book to teleport straight to your room. Or talk to this guy to teleport outside your school. Which was a lifesaver because this school is incredibly long and confusing to always run outside every day. I kind of missed the mod I got in Persona 4 which let me just teleport and know if you have a social link that could be advanced. Maybe that would have helped when I was just wandering around. Also, there were some annoyances like, okay, I know before I said I did like this camera angle, but man was I stupid. I really don't like it! It feels like you don't get to see that far ahead. Maybe the angle should have been a bit lower. Or another thing, the AI, bless them, will do the type advantage attacks knocking down an enemy. But instead of using that extra turn to knock down the other one so you know you can do an all-out attack, they will just kill that down demon making it so much longer to finish these easier fights! Or how you can't actually equip them with new armor or weapons outside the dungeon only inside by talking to them. They don't show up in your menu at all. It really does feel like you don't have any control over the party at any point. Like they can just say, yeah, I'm too tired to go into the dungeons today, despite you being the leader. But that being said, I am liking this different style of Persona game. It actually feels different with its storytelling, as opposed to 4 and 5, which were just very similar. You know, a new friend trapped by a demon, save them, they join your team, repeat each month. So it'll take a little getting used to, but anyway, let's continue. As now Yukari over here hears these girls bullying someone, and then one of them just suddenly... Huh? Where's that voice coming from? Okay, that was a little strange. And now there's a rumor. There's a girl found unconscious in the front of the school after going missing all night. Hmm, hopefully this isn't related to the tartar sauce. This is a tough case, even for Junpei Iori, ace detective. Are you stupid or something? But this should be an easy job for the gang to solve, right? They take everything seriously, right? So, what is this ghost story about? Good evening. Welcome to Junpei's Believe It or Don't. This friend of mine, let's call him Shu. Shu was as white as a white guy. Then, it hit me. 
That ghost must have tried to make dinner. Scary. Okay, we're screwed. Yukari, my favorite character. Please talk some sense into him. Wait, what are you doing on the computer? Oh. Well, yeah, maybe then we won't burn the breads now. Oh, a package arrived. Gee, I wonder what it could be. Mission accomplished. Huh. It's that toaster we ordered. Well, I guess that means we won't burn any breads now. I won't. So now that we've heard about this ghost story, it's probably related to tartar sauce. Well, Junpei is really good at scaring us. Yes. Ah, well, back to sleep. I oh, no, get out of here. <laughs> that isn't very nice. I'll come again. No, you won't. So yeah, the next couple of days is just passing time. I mean, your team tries to work out the goat story, but you are the silent main character. You don't care about any of this. Seriously, the characters will constantly go, dang, you hate the FaZe Clan because nothing phases you. So we start a new social link with Chihiro. Hang on, are we gonna meet in the future? Oh wait, that's a different Atlas game about meeting people in the future. Called 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. And she helps us study, but these two go, shush, don't flirt in the library. Hey baby, let's flirt. Uh, and I don't know, man, Kenji was like, dude, I asked my teacher out and she's actually tutoring me at her house. <laughs> Can't wait to marry her. Whatever. However, we got a major announcement. Well. Today's Friday. Where the gang discussed the ghost rumor. Of course. I got lots of good info. Well, what's the info? Do you know? So apparently three girls were the victims where they went missing and turned up unconscious outside the school. And apparently they hung around this seedy alleyway. Don't worry, it's not that scary, Junpei. Actually, I'm more worried about things I can see. Like toothpaste. Well, how is the place? Okay, yeah, it's pretty seedy. Goatee? So we get beat up for having a goatee. <gasps> As the beanie man comes in to save us, and his name is Shinjiro, who says that, yeah, those girls were here every night, talking about how they would bully this girl called Fuka, who they think is dead because she hasn't been to school in over a week. You think that's unbelievable for school kids to think about? No, uh, yeah, when I had chicken pox at high school, some guy spread the rumor that I died because I wasn't at school for one week. Well, I guess there's no ghost. Dang. There's no ghost. What do you think, Yukari? Paid out a lot. Are you crazy? Also a reminder, I kind of think the game is pretty basic with its social time and how it forces you to max knowledge and charm to even talk to Mitsuru and Yukari. Yeah, no, your party members you want to know more of. So I was just speed running this, having charm coffee, then studying at night to eventually try and learn more about my party members. And I ranked up more with Chihiro, who is literally those character tropes that you know a certain type of person would try and max out straight away. I am not one of those people. What the heck, how did that get there? So now one of the bullies, Fuka, cries out about how all her friends are missing and what they did to Fuka, which was lock her inside the gym overnight. How despicable. Which means she would have been at school during midnight when the dark hour happened. Meaning she's stuck in the tower. What do you think? I guess we'll see. And so we agreed to storm the tower overnight from the gym to try and find her. But in the meantime, I do another social link. Walk backwards, what the heck? Uh, so the gang agrees that tonight they will sneak into school. So you unlocked it earlier. Trey Ben? Trey Ben, what's that mean? It means she's European, Junpei. Paid out a lot. Yes, exactly. So at school. At night. When the gang splits up to find the gym key. Oh, hello there. Ah! And into Tata Sauce we go. But since we didn't go from the usual point, we kinda get split up. Oh no, not you again! While Mitsuru and Yukari stay back for the communications. And eventually we regroup and see in the corner... Here I am. Hey, it's Fuka! Hey, don't give her a gun! So we get distress calls from back at the base, where we see Mitsuru under attack. And that bully comes in zombified, saying a voice told her to go to Fuka. However, she awakens her persona, a giant ball, to save the bully's life as we fight and win, with Akihiko also joining in. And Fuka's now the new navigator, i.e. the person that yells in the top right during battle. And yes, her lines are... <gasps> Ah, uh, yeah, this is a real video that exists on YouTube. And now Fuka, save the bully! What do you have to say for yourself? Fuka. 
Yes, okay, okay, we get it, we get it. Well, uh, I guess we just continue with the game. Remember, it doesn't care to elaborate on story beats right after a boss. And I guess I'll just do social links. Hey, Reb, what's up? Not much. I am happy! Uh, yep, me and my totally hot GF teacher are doing great. How are you and Yukari doing anyway? Uh, paid out a lot. Well, now Akutsuki and Mitsuru gang up on Fuka saying, You have the power. Join the team. Join the team! This annoys Yukari who thinks Mitsuru is forcing people to join the team when they don't want to. Well, Fuka, do you want to? I don't know. She doesn't really talk to you. Anyway, how do you start a social link? Oh, you gotta max out your courage. Man, I'm so glad they fixed this in the future Persona games. Is that so? So yeah, maxing out stats is there's nothing else to do. My name is Pharos. And my name is get the heck out of here! So we climb tighter source as we have to reach a barrier before the next full moon, which is when the story stuff actually happens. And now Mitsuru is on the team, she will surely be powerful! This will be tough. I said... I said... Wow, you're right, Yukari. She does suck. Are you really gonna keep doing that every single battle? I guess... If you're wondering, Marin Karen makes the enemies attack their friends, but has a really high miss rate. And since you can't control your party, she will whip that out quicker than you can say... Scrape, yeah? Trey Ben, what's that mean? And also with that, I really hate how easily you can get knocked down and it wastes a turn for you to attack. As sometimes even a normal weapon attack can trip you. I see now why Smash players hate Brawl. Because the game is hygienic. <laughs> Also now at Shuffle Time they added a thing where it just goes up and a random order now appears. Like, what's the point of even watching the cards now? It's just gonna randomize it. Well, I talked to the Alien vs Predator laptop. He he pwned. As Yukari's mum is weirdly happy with me. And I fuse a pyro jack. What the heck a heart? Yeah, so if you max out these type of demons, they will give you an item at the end. Also, since I got two jacks now. What is the most popular fish in the ocean? I don't know. A starfish! Also, I learned that when you want to fuse, you get randomized abilities that demons attain from each other because it's fusing both of their skills. However, you can back out and re-enter for it to shuffle the skills around. I honestly didn't know that and maybe it might be helpful to someone if you didn't know this as well. So Kenji tries to tell me how great his love life is. Yes, reminder, he's getting tutored, but he thinks that meant the teacher is in love with him. And at this point, I'm only doing the social link to make him more mad. Seriously, this is the funniest support. And I find the European. Oh my god, the cringe, we blind! Garuga mess! Then returning back to the dorm, we find Fuka and Yukari playing with... <gasps> You're such a good boy. I want you to listen closely. Pretty much they work out there's eight big shadows to defeat, and once done, everything should be back to normal. I.e., we got eight more months. And we get another weird tape to watch where it's in Yu Junpei's room as Mitsuru thinks a robber broke in, but it's just boys being boys. Yeah. And, uh, what the the heck? Who are you? Digimon looking ass villains. They are part of a service you hire to kill people and they go. Jesus, how much extra do you have to pay for the silencer? Also note, they are completely fine in the dark hour. Well, I maxed out my charm, but you still can't charm Yukari. However, this guy who looks strangely familiar is like, Whoa, you're hot. Want a model for my company? First, give me 20k. Mate, I don't have that money. How else do you think I got this charming? Oh yeah, I'm still grinding because every night I reject all my friends' phone calls just so I can study to eventually talk to the Trey Ben lady. We then see Shinjuru talking to Akihiko the latter trying to convince the former to return to the team, hinting that he might have been a Persona user that left for some reason. Then see some Zuma kids before a different kind of kid calls it a favor. Wells, 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 look who the cat dragged in. Excuse me? Seems it's time to call in that favor. I need you to come back here on 7 slash 6. So is that 6th of July or 7th of June? You got one chance, bucko! Ugh, fine, I'll deal with you later. Back to the laptop. 
as we see Yukari get more annoyed with Mitsuru and even wants Fuka to dig up dirt on Mitsuru and accompany the Kirijo group. And we finally finished Kenji's hilarious social link where he says he's leaving school to follow his teacher who got transferred away for some reason but you find out that she was engaged and was only doing that to get away from this weirdo. But a better support is the European guy, where you teach him the Japanese way to say goodbye, and he will always say it! Dang, I should have picked a funnier saying. And I enjoyed his support, how his aunt helped him move to Japan, but she dies, and now his uncle wants him to return to the funny continent. No, don't ruin the weeaboo's dream! Then a different kind of social link. Glad I'm not at your school, oh boy! Seriously, this whole combo is like, what the heck? And she reveals that the student is called ram -kun. Well, my name is Ace Ram, so I have safe rides. Right? At least react, you peeled up blue dude! Well, it's the 7th of June. Or 6th of July. And Micah calls us over that we have to distract her parents while she organizes supplies for more shipments that she needs to send to these two American dudes. But I'm trying my best to distract them, but they are just so annoying! You're in very big trouble, young lady. No more of this Yakuza make believe nonsense! I told you to keep it a secret! <laughs> Well, back to the story where the next boss is found in a street, which has these coffin people being found in pairs in hotel beds. Huh. Now, why would two people be in a bed in a hotel? Oh. Oh, I get it. Why? What's on Shirakawa Boulevard? I'm not familiar with that area. That's where all those hotels are. You've heard about them, right, Fuka? Where people go to... You know. Now while we get ready, another little thing I found annoying was that you can't actually check each move on your demon. Maybe there is a way, I, I just, it's just hidden away somewhere. Anywho, we enter the love hotel but get swept up in the shadow's power as they paid an anime studio for this very sus animation of Yukari, where we awake on the bed outside a shower, as a voice in our head tells us to give in to our desires. What desires? I barely show any emotion all game! Look mate, you listen to all my answers for all the tests that you ate. So you're gonna listen now. Wait, so you're the voice in my headphones? You were commanding all those people like Fuka's friend! Yes, it was quite easy, as Apple invented a way to transmit audio to your ear without any device. You, on the other hand, are so emotionally dead, I had to force you to wear these headphones to listen! So come on, give in! No. Oh, okay, have a nice day. And Yukari walks out. You know, you could have just ran back into the shower in that time you wanted to slap me. Are you crazy? Well, we clear through and defeat the bosses, nothing too difficult. As we leave with Akihiko moonwalking off camera, and Junpei more mad we did everything and that he isn't the leader. Look, take it, I don't want this job. As we see the Digi Squad watching from the rooftops. And yeah, he gets really mad at this. Man, they really don't want you clicking with your party members, huh? Also, wait a minute. Back in the Velvet Elevator, I was doing this request for LP, and some of them were to take her out on dates, and they were funny. But I haven't seen one in ages. What do you mean if you missed one of them, you can't do the future ones? What? What? Well, uh, yeah, I guess I apparently just missed one of them, so I won't be able to learn more about LP. Guess my Persona dancing video was the most I know about her now. Be reassured that you can bang all you want in there, no problem. Okay, 2,000 likes and I'll watch the scenes for the next part. Well, back at the meeting, Yukari is like, hold it! I need to say something. I'm gonna ask you straight out. Me? So turns out 10 years ago, the Kirijo group led by her granddad began capturing shadows to experiment on. However, it went bad and the explosion allowed shadows to escape and now form into 12 huge ones. Itkutsuki goes, yes, that is why Cease was formed to clean up this mess. And if we do so, Tata Source and the Dark Hour will disappear forever. Also, why were you hiding this away? Mitsuru was forced to be able to use a persona. It didn't come naturally. Couldn't put that in the main story beats, huh? So Akihiko tells his best friend what's our new plan. As Mitsuru goes to Fuka, okay, to ask for forgiveness for lying to everyone, I want you to use my ID to access the Kirijo database to find out all about that incident 10 years ago. As Junpei gets more mad, Duty. He's becoming isolated and weird. And Yukari reads a note from a dad who worked for Kirijo 10 years ago before his death. But more troubling news is that the MMO is shutting down. Oh no. I thought they hired some guy to fix the troubled lawn. 
challenge. Don't tell me that the company is selling the server to make NFTs. And to maybe save the server, Maya will email her chat logs to the devs to show just how much this game means to her. So you're confessing to your crimes, right? And now we wait. Awkward. As Akutsuki goes, hey, how about you all visit Misura's dad to learn about the incident and also have a summer vacation? Beach babes, here I come. Ugh, men. And Junpei Adano is randomly not mad at us now. The power of swimsuits fixes up bros' fights, huh? But as soon as we leave the school, we learn that a kid called Ken is going to be staying with us. Oh, okay. As long as he's not joining the team or anything. I mean, we do have plenty of empty rooms. So to the resort we go. Holy crap, you're rich. Dude, real life toothpaste. And her dad. Kept you waiting, huh? As we are told to enjoy the beach. <gasps> yep. Some and with all this Junpei cringe, I just noticed. What the heck is with your neck? <laughs> Stop that creepy laugh, you perv. So, which one's your type? Man, I don't care. Oh wait, my finger slipped! Aha. As the dad realizes, Mitsuru was trying to find out about 10 years ago, so it just tells us all what happened with a recording from Yukari's dad, who was being pushed by management and was responsible for the explosion, causing Yukari to run out of the room crying. We chase her as she goes, she's just sad her dad had to die and not Mitsuru is one. Like why her? What did she do to deserve this? And also tells us all this because we have also lost parents. Well, glad we have friends now. You don't know anything. Uh... You really are one of a kind. You okay? Ooh, you're such a gentleman. <laughs> Sheesh. The next day, Kutsuki tells the girls that a shadow fighting weapon they develop has broken containment and to capture it on the island. But who cares because it's time for Operation Babe Hunt. Man, that sucked. Let us never speak of this again. Oh, wait, who the heck is that? Ju -ju Junpei? And she zooms away as we find her in the forest uphill and she seems to really like being with us. As Akutsuki goes, oh, hey, hey, that's the weapon. Yeah, this is I guess. I guess. A man-made robot. The only surviving one after the incident who was created to fight shadows and is very confusingly attached to us. She's so cute, but... She's a robot. And yeah, that ends the trip, where we return. Please wake up. Oh, come on. How easy is it to break into my room? But rejoice, because now we can talk to Yukari. Yeah, sharing pain and parents death. Yeah. It's weird, though, that the game keeps reminding you, hey, you're still only friends, okay, bucko? Like, they are really trying to push you to try and date them. Hey, I'm, I'm just glad you're the first main cast member. I can actually have a social link with 20 hours in. And yeah. Yes, you can use Igus in combat, and she's cool. Also strong. Like so strong, she has an even stronger mode. Or Gia, where in tactics you tell her to use it, and she goes ham till she overheats. Wow, okay, we got a lot of party members now, and I'm really liking how this team is shaping up. Wait, what do you mean Ken joins the team? Are you crazy? Welcome back. So our party in Persona 3 now includes a toaster, two teenagers with varying shades of grey hair, and Yukari. They call you slow! Oh yeah, can't forget about the Fuka alarm clock. Sorry to wake you. So it turns out Fuka the Navigator found a shadow, and Akihiko is like, Sorry, but I think you guys better come. Little fella. Well, it's a doggo. Dog? Man. Guinea pig. And for being... Such a good boy. We adopt him. Also, Pharos is back. I'll come to see you again. Yeah, sure, okay. I've given up trying to stop you. And then it's summer vacation, which usually means a lot of swimming on the beach. Or talking to your party members like Yukari, who you were just given permission to talk to. Because the game's balance of social links is very unbalanced. But no, none of that. You gotta spend every day running. Yeah. And you do all this just for the game to make you run against another school's rival who is so impressed at how fast you are that he wants to start a social link with you. No, I don't think I will. Look, the game gives me nothing to do at night, so I gotta maximize the daytime with actual story characters. So I don't have time for you. N. P. C's. And eventually it's the full moon again. Well, it's a full moon once again. Gee, could you sound more enthusiastic? I mean, I expect that answer from me. Yeah, gee, no care in the world main character. So we find the boss shadow underground. Remember, we need to defeat 12 of these to end the dark hour forever. But as we enter, there's nothing here. However, 
Well done. The bad guys finally enter, known as Strega, which was that Digimon looking dude who is literally holding a grenade and sounds like Simple. I've always been such a huge fan of Gangan Rampa. And Jesus? You've gained new allies, yet this land still crawls with sin. Oh, yeah, that's totally him. They want to stop us from ending the Dark Hour because without it, they won't have their special Persona powers. Power? Are you crazy? And they are trapping us inside. Well, nothing else to do since we got no Wi Fi signal, but defeat the Shadow further in. And this plays, well, it's up there on the creepy scale for a Persona game. And it's a military type shadow where it changes forms, but I just set my toaster to assault mode to burn it to a crisp. And we tell Akutsuki that we won, but Strega trapped us inside. So please come. Pick us up! Hmm. What does he know? One in your own garden, and three in the garden opposite yours. Ah, oh, great. Now he's been watching too much better homes and gardens. Well, not happy with people mooching off the hotel's free rent status, they make the dog go into battle. Yes, it's a Persona user. This has to be a joke! Yes, it is. Wait, really? Oh, it's no joke. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah, he's quite strong. Gee, it makes me wonder if there are any other animals that use personas. Like how about a frog? Also, Fuku's voice acting. <laughs> Those four are powerful. Why is this game's catchphrase power? Power. 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 Yeah, due to being at the mid to late stage of the game, it was cool to see that with such a big team, when your main party dies, they return home. However, since you heal at the base, you could just use the bench to keep fighting that same night, as long as you want till you get tired. So we make it to the end of the tower block and begin bumbling around social links to the next full moon. But it seems like there's a new recording on the monitor. A reminder, this means that they are recording every single room in the hotel at all times. Hmm. Why are you such I a weirdo? Hmm. I should have gone for one piece. Well, with Koromaru, we finally unlock something else to do at night. You can walk the dog. He got the zoomies. He sometimes finds items for you and you can randomly get to walk with other characters. But I found that most of the time when I went to walk, he doesn't really feel like it. Damn it, how will I get my exercise? Also, does anyone else dislike this teacher? Because man, do they not stop talking. Well, now it's a summer festival, which is hilarious because you only get one person you can ask out, which is from your main party, that being Yukari. And the event is just go out, talk a bit, then immediately go home back to study. Such a school life, but hey, I won! A Jack Frost doll. Wow, exclusive merch! So yes, yeah, summer vacation continues with me trying to speedrun maxing out my knowledge from Mitsuru and also courage later for Fuka, because Atlas really said you had to be smart, charming, and courageous to talk to women. And it kind of sucks here because you can't even progress Yukari's social link. She's just unavailable outside of school, and you're forced to do random things as she just stands there burning the dog's food! Well, now we see Junpei complaining about how boring everything is, until he notices a goth girl. Get out of my way. Yes, he has a type. I can't move. She's just drawing and Junpei realizes that's how all artists act and leaves. As we see Akihiko try to convince Shinjiro to rejoin the team. But due to some death he may have caused two years ago, he will never return. Not even a Persona dog user could convince him. However, Ken overhears this and gee, I sure hope nothing bad happens from this action changing the entire nature of the group's dynamic from now on. Mean. Well, he's fine, our teammates. You know, the beef bowl place. Oh, hey, maybe we could meet up there. <laughs> Whoa! Well, maybe you are my type. What am I, the chairman? Transmogrifies. And speak of the goatee. I called this meeting so that I could introduce him, since he'll be joining Yeah, the, the kid is joining. Yeah, you're staying on the bench. As you can see, it was his own decision. You hear that, lawyers? I'm cleared of any wrongdoing. Well, I also decided to study on my vacation, because... Got nothing better to do in this town. Also, no one is playing that MMO anymore. And finally maxed out my smartness. However, yes, of course, what do you think? I can't talk to Mitsuru. Although she does try. It's memes. He still can't start his social link. So Junpei meets his ideal GF again and says, Wow, it's so cool that you can draw. I'm sure all artists in the world are always happy and have no emotional trauma, right? And Jinpei is really insistent on seeing her art, and harasses the poor girl who just wanted to draw the sunshine. However, he notices that her palm is bleeding and goes, Milady, I doth have the must to help you. You're weird. Chidori. Uh -huh. I'm almost done with the picture. I doubt you'll understand it. 
but if you want to see it, then you know where to find me. Yeah, Junpei has hooked the line and sinkered. Oh yeah, well Junpei is simping. I'm spending my hard-earned money to buy weapons and equipment from the police station. And it's annoying how you have to go into the dungeon to equip them on the party members. But then I learned, if you check a character's status, they will randomly go, Hey, you know that equipment you gave me? Nah, I picked the better one for myself. You can have it back. I get no respect as the leader, I tell ya. And I realized another mechanic, since the game thinks that all social links are always romantic, you know how I just calmly talked to Chihiro earlier, uh, she thinks I'm in love with her! And because I didn't talk to her for a few days, like I said, I'm focusing on the main cast, it reversed the social link! Meaning you have to spend a whole day talking to Chihiro to fix it! Gee, I sure hope she won't be mad when Igis joins the school. Wait, why is she joining? Oh, to learn how to be more like a human. Humanoid tactical weapon? What on earth? Well, Akihiko asked us to come and try to convince Shinjiro, as Akihiko says something important. Why not try putting whole lemons inside the rice balls? What the hell are you talking about? And that Ken has now joined the team. And this prompts Shinjiro to finally rejoin. I hope you're good. Here, Adios, asshole. Oh, maybe I should try the club too. Well, finally I can progress Yukari's social link. Where her mother interrupts and Yukari gets mad at how her mother just kept getting boyfriends after the dad died. And Junpei has been busy. What do you do to make yourself feel alive? Uh, I don't know. Breathing, I guess. As he says how he's the hero and brags about. Power. And claims he's the leader of the group. Junpei, I ain't even mad. Do what you gotta do to riz it up. Dude, rocks. So on the next full moon, Junpei is about to enter the dorm when Chidori's voice stops him as we gather to find the next shadow. It's near Polonia Mall, I think. You think? Damn, Mitsuru is so mad Fuka replaced her as a navigator. So where's Junpei? Maybe we should look for him? No, it's okay. You're all young. Sometimes you just get in one of those moods. As we head to the mall and don't find any shadows, Fuka tries again. Hear the wind's answer in your ear. Touch the Hey, is she okay? However, we learn that it's under the area as we see Junpei all tied up. Man, I knew goths were kinky. Damn it, power. So it turns out she was part of Strega. I mean, we already knew that, but Stupe didn't. And she says, okay, since you're the leader, tell your group to not kill the shadow and stop this dark hour business. He's like, uh, yeah, about that. So we find the shadow underneath in the power cables, and it probably wasn't a good idea to bring two people who are weak to electricity. Congratulations. Well, Chidori is mad that Junpei ain't a leader, and Junpei goes, Wait a minute, you never liked me. So we arrive and interrupt their little session. Junpei stops her playing Persona 3, and Akutsuki. Hmm? When did she? When did who? How do you know her? Hmm. Anyway. Only power. So Chidori is mad we took her persona away and keeps throwing tantrums. Give it back to me. I want her back. As Mitsuru tries to question her, but no luck. We hate you. She keeps on drawing and Junpei is really obsessing over her. Chidori, on the other hand, keeps cutting her hand. But she heals almost instantly with some super regenerating powers. Well, on the next day, because he was so insistent, I finished Kenji's social link. Where he goes, yeah, okay, maybe I didn't love her. I just love the idea of having a teacher GF. Bro, I'm so depressed. And what do I do? I steal his egg. You brought this on yourself, bub. And for completing his social link, he gives us a choker he made for the teacher. It would look good on me. Oh, you know, maybe it would. Since the whole emo vibe we got going. Well, that's done. Back to Junpei's tragic love life. Yo, Chitterita. He buys her a new sketchbook as they slowly hit it off. Don't However... But Shinji is like, ah, oh, this is normal because they got their personas artificially. They lose control and the persona tries to kill them. Man, my hee-ho would never do that to me. And they need suppressants to keep them weak. Chidori goes, why are you so sad, Junpei? Death is like not waking up the next day. It's pretty normal. I don't want you to die, Chidori. You're so weird, Junpei. Akihiko chases after Shinjiro, mad that he takes suppressants too, saying how 10 years ago he couldn't save his sister in a fire and doesn't want the same to happen to Shinjiro. I'm sure it's... Fine. Hey, Ken, how you doing? Well, continuing Yukari's social link where she's getting mugged, but we save her by screaming at the top of our lungs. <coughs> totally embarrassing her. So Chidori shows Junpei that she can heal plants. A very neat party trick. Oh. And I continue by dungeon crawling, but Mitsuru is sick. So fine, Ken, here's your tryout. 
Yeah, you're off the team. And once again, we get a visitor in our room. Three seasons have passed since we met. Time goes by so quickly, and many things change. And I suddenly realize, the more we let this kid talk, the more I rank up his arcana. And what's his arcana? The death one! That's not a good sign. And after one more night arcade, I finally max out courage, so I could finally talk to Fuka! Except I can't find her anywhere! Man, these old game mechanics. Well, I think Yukari is interested in us, but this edgy boy. I don't know, I can never tell his true emotions. Well, another recording, this time showing that every single room in the hotel is being monitored, as we see Shinji watching a cooking channel. Damn, much respect learning to cook. However, he doesn't want anyone else to know. He says that Shinjiro-san is not asleep. And now since I've done all my stat ranks in September, I had nothing else to do at night. No, seriously, there's like nothing else to do in this game. As the dog was tired, so then I got a job at the bar that didn't pay me because of some legal thing. But I got to start this social link with a priest. He's a great role model. Well, apparently we are meant to do the school festival, but a typhoon hits the land, so it's cancelled. Uh, okay then, just thanks for telling me. I'll say you may have noticed that I'm kinda rich right now. Well, it's because I finally worked out the shuffle time and managed to get all the money outcomes because this is the only way to earn actual money and the equipment is so expensive. Seriously, I don't know how you're meant to properly farm this apart from praying at the shrine, save scumming, to get good odds like more money in the dungeon or experience, which was then a great way to level up my entire team. I sense a great catastrophe in your future. Oh, uh, that's great, gee, thanks. Wait a minute, why is time skipping? So, ah, uh, apparently you're never shown this, but you go, you caught a cold in the typhoon and slept for two full days because the characters all go, no, are you feeling better, sweetie? Would have been nice to at least show it a little. Maybe an anime cutscene, huh? Anyway, I unlock Cross and Penta Persona Fusing. But you can't use any Persona you want, it's more like you have to find four or five needed to make a set one. Like the aforementioned Hee Ho. And I don't know how many people knew this, but uh... You remember that area where Junpei got beat up? Well, it's here. Yeah, just left of the station. I didn't know the entire game till now. Might as well feed this cat! Which is actually a quest line for Elizabeth, where you do odd jobs and eventually get... A scrubbing brush! Yes, it works in combat. What? Don't make me bring out the bus sign! I love joke weapons so much. And it turns out to actually start Fuka's social link, you gotta join the art club. Ah, oh, so everyone saw Chidori be an artist and suddenly they are all inspired now. So I finally can start a social link! And what is it about? Cooking. She's a bad cook. What is it with nervous people and being bad with food? And meanwhile, Yukari is saying, Hey BF, let's go on a hike! And I'm like, wait, are we, are we dating now? Well, maybe she will like this Jack Frost doll. And now it's time for another room watching time, and this time it's my room. Maybe they'll catch that gremlin breaking in. Door unlocked in 92 seconds. My time has improved. How many people enter my room? Man, imagine you woke up in the middle of the night and you see those robotic eyes staring back at you. Well, how about the next recording? So like... Are we gonna do something about the fact that they are recording everyone or just keep watching the video? This one piece is beloved by all, including friends, boyfriends, and boyfriends' friends. So I gotta fix the relationship with Chihiro again, because she really freaks out anytime I talk to anyone else apart from her. I mean, come on, this was just trying to help with Fuka's cooking, because she can't even cook rice. Well, Yukari says her mum won't remarry till she approves. See, just sitting and listening gets you far in a relationship. And I talk more to the priest, who tells me to shave my head bald because to be more like him. Wow, you're right. This really suits me. I look so... British! And finally, it's the next full moon. Only a few left. But let's worry about them one at a time. Assuming they come one at a time. <laughs> just kidding. With it now being two shadows, where one hides the other, who then spins a roulette. And you have to press X for it to land on blue to hurt the enemy, but it affects you landing on red. And yes, my luck sucks. No, no, 
Well, Akiko realizes today is the 4th of October and runs off. As we return back to the hotel and Mitsuru is like, Oh crap, I forgot! The 4th is a two year anniversary of Ken's mother being killed. As we see him in the alleyway about to kill Shinji, because it turns out Shinji had lost control of his persona back then and accidentally killed a civilian being Ken's mother. Which is why he quit the team and tried to suppress his persona powers. With now Ken realizing it's him wanting to exact revenge. That's why I decided that I had to find her killer. You! Bro, chill, you're like five years old. It also begs the question as to why Mitsuru and Nikutsuki approve Ken joining the team when they know that their groups ought to kill his mother. It's kind of sick in a way. No way. Power. Are you shitting? Also, wait, they were in this alleyway the whole time, right? How did Fuka not find them? I bet Mitsuru is real happy knowing that she's, you know, slipping up. What are you trying to say? So Shinji's like, yeah, okay, kill me to make you happy. But remember, doing this will turn you into me. Someone who will always regret killing another human. But ta-da, it's Gun, Gun Jesus, Jesus! Who appears saying if you both want to die, I can help speed it up. And this makes Ken mad he didn't get to exact his revenge. So Gun Boy shoots Shinji in the... Shin, and then asks who their navigator on the team is. Ken says it's him, and Gunboy goes to shoot Ken, but Shinji takes the bullet and dies. Come on, kid, you're just a kid. And the gun guy runs off as we find the body. Where the next day at school, they hold a funeral service. Wait, he was a student? I thought he was like 25 years old or something. And this death shakes up the group. Mostly Akihiko who wasn't strong enough to save another person he cared about. And Ken, just being a kid. So Akihiko goes to him and says, Oi! Man up! And Ken talks to himself. I made up my mind. And says, yeah, okay, I'll help you stop the dark hour. With only one day of feeling sad. Gee, people in this game move on quickly from death, huh? Jeez. Oh yeah, and this death both made Akihiko and Ken's persona evolve. Do you realize you're still going on the bench, okay? You seem tired. Yeah, you keep waking me up in the middle of every night! Also, I had the weirdest glitch where after grinding so much in the dungeons for money, I managed to buy Igus a new gun because she wanted to feel more American. But the Medusa gun... Ah... Uh, hello? Where is it? Is it a glitch? Well, anyway, I felt bad that she didn't get her present, so bought her that Moomoo Moo dress. Although, I don't know why I had to spend 300k at the police station for it to, you know, when she already has the dress. And also why... Why do you have our swimsuits? I'm only doing what I think is right. Also, I learned that you can get basic weapon types and then fuse with a persona to make a strong weapon. I would show you gameplay of said weapon, but it takes one day to make. Uh, better remember to pick that up later. However, I also learned that only on Sundays at the shrine, where our mafia boss used to be, you can find Akinari, who is a dying man that wants someone to talk to. <coughs> Bro, dying don't mean you gotta have no manners. And now it's exam time, where finally I could use all the knowledge I got, receiving all those free answers from the voice of my headset to ace the test, and finally win over Mitsuru. And what do you know? I took the entire grade and got first place. And I still can't talk to her till November. Boy, the social links in this game are very fair and well balanced, huh? Well, now Fuka's bestie, the bully that loves saying her name, is leaving the school. And this makes Fuka sad. But then she's happy, as she learns that she feels happy making others happy. So her persona evolves. Will this let you actually scan Straga now, or is Mitsuru still gonna be mad? I guess we'll see. He'll get used to his lame jokes. Power. Okay. And with Yukari's social leg, she actually gets jealous when we talk to Fuka. Can I seriously not talk to two people at the same time without someone else getting mad? Well, back to spying on teammates since there's nothing else to do. Also, the internet's pretty bad in 2009. I mean, you know. What's up, Yukatan? Hey, does that mean you gotta call me master? Hey, wait a minute. Happy to provide you with some of my special services. Oh no, not again! And we finally rank 10 with Yukari, with the most awkward hug ever. I feel like these social links are pretty basic compared to what they do in the future games. Oh yeah, Junpei by the way is visiting Chidori every day in the hospital, in case you shippers were wondering. And Yukari for a rank 10 present gives us a strap. Oh, a cell phone strap a dad gave her. Uh, silly me. Yeah, of course, 2009 had cell phone straps. Well, it's November, meaning time to defeat the 12th final shadow, which will end the dark hour and our persona usage. Feels so weird that the game is just suddenly ending. So Fuka finds a shadow on the moonlight bridge. Hmm. But on the bridge, we must first stop Straga, who's trying to stop us from ending the green time zone. Gun Jesus asked us a strange question if we have watched the first Shrek movie. 
who cares? This makes him mad since it was his favorite movie, and we fight. With Digimon Bro literally throwing grenades, but it's fairly easy. And Digimon goes, well, if you end the dark hour, do you know what happens to us? That's enough. And Gunji's is, uh... Hey, I don't think that's how personas work, mate! But Digimon stops him and drags him over the ledge. <laughs> well, uh, okay. Time to fight the final shadow. Who has some fun mechanics, where you gotta destroy these angels to make him crash land to deal damage. But he also summons minions, and it really made me try and land a lot of multi-hit attacks. But since my allies don't listen to me, I sort of became the stat buff and debuff guy on the team. And we win. What will be our victory cheer? One, two, three. Can we go home now? So yeah, the music's still being eerie. Uh, sure, let's celebrate! And make Matsuru foot the bill by eating some expensive food! Daddy Tuna! I guess Pharos is also leaving now. First time we speak to him in the day. I shall treasure our conversations always. What conversations? You did all the talking! And we get the food delivered. Wait, is there like no fancy restaurants in the town? Damn, okay, flying it out from Tokyo due to how rich you are. And her rich dad also comes in to celebrate with us, finally stopping the dark hour, and says seas will disband at midnight. Oh, hey, by the way, where is Akutsuki? What's that? He's tuning up I guess? Uh, a bit strange to do that on the night we win, but okay. And we take the goofiest anime photo I've ever seen. It's so hilarious. And as it hits midnight... I thought we ended the dark hour. What the heck? It's still the dark hour. As we hear the school bell and all rush to the tower to find... Yakutsuki. And I guess under his mind control. Ah, oh, come on. You can't just install Linux on an Android machine. It won't even work right. And Yakutsuki. You were evil? Man, for a guy who spies on people in his hotel? Wow. I am shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shocked. And he says one word. Transmogrify. Which roughly translates to him wanting us to destroy the shadows, which actually frees the Twelve to rejoin together and bring about the fall, which I believe is the end of the world. As humans ruined everything, it is said that a prince will reset the world and then rule over it. And he wants to be that guy. He also says that the Kirija group tried this 10 years ago, but this accidentally led to the Dark Hour and Tata Source being formed. And since we try to stop him, he orders Igus to capture us to be sacrificed, which means... Oh, what the bloody heck? I just realized. I forgot to pick up that strong weapon. No, now they'll cancel my deposit. <laughs> so before we can continue on with Persona 3's amazingly written story. We'll call this Operation Toothpaste. I did promise that I would show you what Elizabeth was up to. Because the last I checked, the video got two likes. Huh, bit higher than usual. So Elizabeth a little rap scallion. You stupid! Turns out all these dates are taking her to various locations, and yet the other people in the world can see her. Cuisine so luscious that one's cheeks fall off. Hey, don't waste all the money I gave you fusing personas! So yeah, at the shrine, you do all the shrine things, and eventually it all leads up to, in Get typical out. persona fashion, talking to a girl for four minutes, ends up with her in your bedroom. If I may be so bold. So by skipping this, did I somehow manage to avoid awkwardly getting it on with the otherworldly being from an elevated dimension? And some other emotions that are weird and deeply confusing. Yeah. Well, okay, back to the story. And a reminder, this is getting to the end game of Persona 3, so spoilers. Ah, <laughs> spoiler job scare! Uh, 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 okay, so we're getting crucified by Okutsuki. What the hell? White guy! We see Mitsuru's dad come to maybe save us! Father! Hey, why is Yukari the only one that's not straight? Fool! Ten years! I've wasted ten long years! However, I guess doesn't agree with him sacrificing us to the green thing of the sky, as we get, honestly, one of the most baffingly anime cutscenes I've ever seen. So Akutsuki shoots the dad, while well, he gets shot, as I guess frees us, so Akutsuki whips out some device, but the dog actually does something in the story. Look, he's a very good boy, but this is like the only thing he does in the story, and I don't even know what this device was for! So Kutsuki is like, damn, the world sucks. I wanted to remake it and be their king. Oh well, guess I'll die. <laughs> and Mitsuru's father dies. This is no time to joke around. As now Mitsuru is sad, she can't buy more Gucci handbags with her dad's <laughs> credit card. And uh, guess we just go back to school the next day while Mitsuru grieves. 
It's in the papers, too. Sudden death of Kirijo's group CEO. They blame it on illness, though. Yeah, it's never the truth. So yeah, we don't know what to do because the whole reason we were trying to stop the Dark Hour was for Okutsuki. Also, Fuka somehow retrieves the original unedited file of Yukari's dad's final moments, which legit makes no sense. Because in it, he goes, Do not fight the shadows. And Yukari says, Huh, okay, I'll fight the shadows for you, dad. I love you, Yukari. Please take care of yourself. Dad? Jeez, my ears! Way to ruin the mood, guys! Daddy! That's it, mood gone! As we see Yukari's persona evolve, and Igor summons us back to his elevator. Welcome. Now then. There has been a change in you recently. Have you noticed? I am referring to your circumcision. Farewell. As we see Junpei meet his goth GF who says, Get away from me. Every time you get close, it hurts. Bro, there's some Romeo and Juliet type thing going on. Except I didn't expect Romeo to wear a baseball cap. And Juliet to look like she visits Tumblr every day. I mean, come on. Oh! What are those? And so we continue in Tata Source. I mean, nothing else to do with this town. Where I was roadblocked by these mini bosses. Purely because Yukari and Igus both are weak to electricity. And that's no good. So I had to actually swap my entire team out and grind them up to a good level just for this fight. It took one hour, by the way, even with the speed up function. However, I also scrubbed the toilet, which amazed Elizabeth so much so that she gave us a maid outfit, specifically made for Yukari. Look, I'm not ordering you to, it's just, you have the same voice actor, okay, it's a Persona 5 reference, cause same voices. Jeez. Look, we're buying your marketable figurine to make you happy then. And also... Power! And so we continue through the dungeon, still wondering why you're fighting shadows when Yukari's dad said specifically not to, while also finding out on TV, there's that guy who wanted my money for modeling! Now trying to sell us things. Very expensive things. But I had so much money from grinding, I thought, yeah, okay, why not grab these while I can. And then in the middle of November, we got... Another transfer student? Who the hell are you? Could they not dub the NPC dialogue? <laughs> so this is Ryoji. Good morning. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You are dangerous. Dangerous? Oh yeah? Yep, his whole personality is to flirt with every girl he sees. Which instantly makes him Junpei's best friend! Also, I found it a little annoying how since I ranked 10 Yukari, she doesn't have flavor dialogue anymore for these events, so no mention of Ryoji, she's just, oh, teehee, you're my boyfriend, teehee. So, more dungeon time in this next block, where my team... What the heck are they waiting for? It's just one enemy, please fight! And for random social links, the food guy suddenly goes, Jesus is coming, look busy. Then mad that we don't believe him and runs off. Man, these social links sure are something in this game. I mean, what? In the paradise, we will all have green bodies and live in swamps. Yeah, right. Also, by the way, just so you know, I absolutely love this part of Persona games because you always have a lot of money and you have a high enough level to actually fuse some cool Personas. And you get these cards which boost your Persona stats because holy the strength of this dude! Story-wise, we go to Kyoto, not Nara, and to someone who just legit visited them both, it was kind of hilarious. Yeah, there was a lot of Persona stuff over in Japan and apparently they were doing this Persona 3 Ferris wheel thing and I actually went there on the right time, right day and waited 20 minutes for some cool light show, but turns out it was just a blue background and text. I thought it was broken because I was expecting some images, so using Google Translate, I spoke to the right organizers and they straight up replied to me. We didn't even know there was a Persona event going on here. Amazing, Atlas, just amazing. I should have gone for one piece. As we see Mitsuru finally return, and Yukari talks to her. To tell you the truth, you're not the easiest person to relate to. I guess we'll see, see, I guess. As they bond over both dads dying. But Ryoji breaks up the moment. I know this place on Shirakawa Boulevard. Ow! No, no, not an owl, a real scream of pain. <laughs> Which makes me think, okay, Finally! I can talk to Mitsuru. I maxed out knowledge. I aced the exams. Why won't you talk to me? So we arrive at Kyoto Station, which looks exactly the same 15 years later. <laughs> 
Seriously, it was hilarious. I just saw this place alight last week. And they stay at the Onsen Hotel. And I guess in Japan, it's a normal thing for schools to go on a big trip. And they go here. Yeah, okay. Which makes Junpei very excited. Keep dreaming, Junpei. So, you walk around, talk to the students, and progress the days. I mean, Kyoto was my least favorite part in Japan, but seriously, you didn't have to make it that boring. The gang visit overpriced shrines. They pray. Azukari and Mitsuru bond the only way two girls know how. I'm sorry. Father was only doing what he... And they slowly become friends, with Mitsuru opening up about her struggles of having to run the entire company by herself. So guess all that rivalry is finally over, huh? Well, I guess we should go and take a bath together now. Yeah, very good friends, as Mitsuru's persona evolves. Now it's open bath time, and you know what that means? Awkward, Awkward interactions, interactions between, between the, the two groups, groups because this is, is an anime, anime game. game. But what I want to know is... Bro, why are you wearing your hat? It's gonna get so wet! Ha ha ha, boys will be boys. Yeah. However, you do get a minigame, which I didn't understand the directions of and got caught. Yeah, I guess is totally gonna care that the one guy she's interested in is spying on her after what she did in our room. It just seems so out of character. Yeah, this whole thing just felt incredibly out of place in this he game. But after being executed, we finally return, and at the end of November, we can talk to Mitsuru! And it's food related! Ooh, yeah. So back to the usual social links. Bro, just breathe, stop faking it! As we see, what the heck, Strega is alive? No way! Shot. And they give Chidori weapons, who goes to Tata Source alerting Fuka. No, damn it. But he does come, running off to her. Well, good thing I permanently benched him. He finds Shidori at the school, but before Junpei can approach her, she whips out an axe. And we fight a very, very easy fight, like the easiest fight in the entire game. Wow. Damn straight. Astrega appears with the gun boy going, damn, she got poisoned by you. Hey. And shoots Junpei. Dude, you're killing me. Who then has a dream in the hospital and Chidori, using her plant come back to life powers, sacrifices a life to save Junpei. And it's such a touching seed. Uh, couldn't Gun Boy just shoot them again? As Junpei in his rage evolves his persona and... What the fuck? The Straker runs off. Gee, another death in the game. I sure hope they mourn it properly. Oh, okay, we just go back to daily life. Well, Junpei is unavailable, which does not change a single thing about my playthrough, as we take Mitsuru out to eat burgers! Okay. And Junpei finally feels better, as the hospital sends Chidori's sketchbook, and he's like... You wouldn't be able to understand her drawings anyway. But she actually drew him in there, a free commission! Giving us so much feels! And Junpei finally is our friend! Yeah, a bit late for that, buddy! I ain't trusted you a single bit! Which is a good idea, because instead of hanging out with us, he goes with Ryoji, who I guess is still very suspicious of. I don't think we need to worry about Ryoji-kun. Oh, and why is that? Where's your evidence? I believe I understand the concept of loss. As Aiga says she will do whatever she can to protect us. Oh cool, a free bodyguard. And we see more recordings by Akutsuki, because I guess no one bothered to stop the cameras recording 24-7 in every single room. Ow! <laughs> He's so stupid. Maybe I should drink more milk. Bro, the milk council got to him! However, on the next full moon, we don't do anything. However, Igus heads to the bridge to find Ryoji, wondering who he is. But Igus goes, I remember now. You are the shadow I was made to defeat. Ten years ago I tried, but it was too weak, so I sealed you away at a random NPC that was nearby. He was this emo kid who loved headphones and being very neutral to responses. Oh my god. Wait, I don't know. Who, who is it? Wait, it's me! Yeah, so that annoying kid Pharos was Ryoji inside us, as now Igus fights him, but gets badly damaged. You know, Igus, he wouldn't remember any of this if you didn't bring it up. Like, none of this would have happened if he just kept quiet. <laughs> as Ryoji tells us that he's the appraiser. The appraiser? A shadow born from the 12 bosses, i.e. us fighting them brought him out of us. And if we don't kill Ryoji by the 31st of December, he will call in Nyx, who will destroy the world, which is what Akutsuki and Straker want. <laughs> what are you guys freaking out about? 
All we have to do is defeat this Nyx. Defeating Nyx is impossible. Oh, that changes things. Because everything dies. So Nyx is like that for the entire world. Brought about by... I don't know if people not worship. I wonder if that's explained later. However, if we do kill Ryoji, it doesn't stop Nyx. Uh, it will still kill us in March. But we would forget the dark hour and have three months of normal school life. Bro, have you seen the normal school life of this game? It's so boring. No, I don't want that. I want to keep fighting personas for 10 years at least. So the rest of December, you don't even go to Tata Source. There's no gameplay. It's just the character slowly having to realize they will die. It's all your fault. You had that thing inside you and didn't even know it. Jeez, how the heck would I know? Man, I knew you were faking being my bro. Yeah, we're all scared. Yes, I can't stop shaking. And this depression also means I can't talk to any of the party members any single day. Even I guess it's damaged, I can't use her. So you gotta get into that holiday spirit, huh? As Food Boy Social Link turns out to be, he only wanted to be our friend to get us to join his cult. Well, that's just great. Oh, that night, if you were wondering, I was going to the arcade to increase my Persona's magic stats. Look, I'm just preparing for death, okay? Going to arcades help that? As Mitsuru goes, oh golly, I won't be able to attend college with my company thing going on. Yeah. You do know the world is ending, right? Or is there some secret escape you know about? I guess we'll see. As Mitsuru no, and Yukari reach the final to... form of friendship. Aww, are you feeling one we? And Fuka turns into a Christmas tree. Well, at least the place is trying to look lively for Xmas. Yukari gives us a Christmas cake, and on actual Christmas Day, we sleep. Look, the world's gonna end. I think we can forgive them for not going wild on Christmas. As Mitsuru's social link has her being convinced to be more free with us, and the party members talk to each other, thinking about what they will do with Ryoji. You know, you've really changed, Fuka. Oh yeah, also all the Sundays I was talking to Akinari, who while coughing in my face, talks about the book he's writing about a pink crocodile. No one's gonna buy that! And he dies. Why did he disappear? And on the 30th, I guess returns, who pleads with everyone to have their memory erased. She doesn't want to see us all sad. But everyone goes, ah, you silly robot. We want to fight for our lives. Making Igus go, man, I wish I had a life. And then her persona evolves. Gee, the conditions for these are sure are random. So we come to decision time. Everyone agrees to not kill Ryoji. Me, on the other hand, wanting to not go with the pack because I'm very neutral, kill Ryoji. Which, uh, ends the game with everyone losing their memories and they go karaoke. And then the world blows up. Oh, it was just my imagination. You know how us quiet kids are always having these wild imaginations? Okay, fine, I'll let you live. Just stop hitting on women, okay? That's reserved for the next protagonist. So Ryoji goes, oh, okay, cool, you let me live. I'll tell you where Nyx is. And she will appear on the top of Tata Source on the 31st of January. Oh, yeah, we got another month. And so it's the first day of the new year. Why'd I stay up all night watching that stupid movie? Did you guys see it? It had these giant Amazon women running around in the jungle. Why would I watch that? As the girls are at the shrines in kimonos. Fuka, you look... Oh, wow. Jeez. Also, it's been two hours since I last had a fight. Please, why? I just want to use my broken personas. And hearing my plea, the game lets us move to the final block. Very heavenly looking. And a whole lot of insta-kill. <laughs> As I make my way through, the main party being Yukari, Igus, and Akihiko. Because it turns out having someone with electricity is actually very helpful in Persona 3. A lot of bosses are weak to it. As we see that some cult has been putting stickers around, saying it's the end of the world. I do like how they actually change the environments a lot in this game. Then we'll talk more to Mitsuru, saying we love her. It's cause, just because it's funny, okay? Don't think anything more about it, okay? As she has actually been forcibly engaged to another company CEO to help the Kirija group survive without her dad. Man, what an original storyline. I sure wonder if they will reuse that again in a future Persona game. I guess we'll see. So Junpei goes, wow, bro, you're my best friend. Lies. It's all lies. And we can finally talk to Igus, who actually has the best social link in the game. And so apparently due to us pulling Igus on the beach, Junpei made Akiko pay for a free lunch. 
six months later, somehow not inviting Fuka and Mitsuru. That's cold, Junpei. However, they find an interview with the cult, revealing them to be Strega, who are saying Nyx will bring about the end of the world. Revelation? People can't seriously be buying this crap, can they? I guess. So we meet Misuru's fiance and actually, what the heck? I thought we were being neutral. Well, that's one way to win her over. And it's kind of funny how I was trying to speed run Misuru and I guess both before the 31st, while also dumping everyone else. Oh, Yukari, you're safe. She keeps saying the same thing over and over every morning. But like I said, yes to Yuko for a Sunday date. But then Misuru asked me out later in the week. So I agreed. And the main character just dumps Yuko through text, reversing her social link. Yes, I have a lot of angry ladies with me right now. But who cares? Because I'm with the party members. Where with Igus, you teach her slowly about loneliness and you make friends with his granny. You look for her cat, but then realize the cat's about to die. So granny lonely. Her grandkids don't visit, you know, usual death stuff. And I don't know, man, it's so adorable. I just wish the social links had voice lines because I was feeling so bad for Igus slowly learning about what life is if it was voiced. Rip my heart. Speaking of heart, Mitsuru confesses to us. We neutrally respond, Yukari none the wiser. Seriously, we just go back home and people are like, Greetings. And we see Mitsuru's room. I wonder if we should tell her we've seen this room before. What are you trying to say? And speaking of, the final recording has Koromaru revealing that we were being watched the whole time. Wow, okay. And Yukari finally says, okay, let's turn it off. Gee. I don't want that footage to leak, huh? Also, I got so overpowered that I thought I could fight the Grim Reaper! So he didn't want to fight me. You've really matured over this last year. You think that's gonna hold up in court? And for Igus' final link, she falls in love with us. I mean, that was pretty obvious. And invites us to a room. Damn, girl, you live like this? And ask us to put our finger oils on the sensitive spot behind her neck as she says she doesn't know what noise she'll make. Where have you been? You don't want to know. And so we reach January 31st. Um, can I say something? Fatty Tuna. Wow, you're really smart, Yukari-san. As she says, okay, we might lose our memories when we win, so let's promise to meet on the rooftop on graduation day to prove that we still remember being friends. So we should wrap everything up, huh? Wait, am I missing something? Oh no, I forgot one social link! As we run back to the mall, I realize something. I was earning all this money because I was gonna give it to Tanaka for the modeling gig! Look, he called me attractive. I have a shot of being a model. Well, tough luck, kiddo. It was all a scam. But the plan was to bring you here for this. What the hell? So you're behind the whole green dark hour and all this nonsense? You could say that, or oh, the maker of this YouTube video has pulled this out to explain the funny greed light and how talking to be on the final day actually skips the final boss in the actual game as an actual in-game glitch. What's a YouTube? Well, I don't want you defeating Nyx, so I'll just keep you to the final part of the game. Oh, wow, he actually did it. However, pulling another ass bull, the voice in the headphones that gave us all the test answers now tells us about a new function, that the MP3 player has a rewind ability titled Deus Gem Machina, allowing us to rewind time back to January 31st. Ah, it's rewind time. All right, screw you, you Shrek wannabe. I'm a defeat next. And so we head to Tata Souls for the final time, climbing up to find Jin, you know, Grenade Boy, and fight him, which is pretty easy, as he dies going on about how they were part of a hundred orphans that Kirijo tested on giving Persona abilities, and only three of them survived till now. And that's why he looks up to Gun Jesus, who was their leader. But as we leave, he blows himself up with the slimes. At least he was with the grenades till the end. And further up, we find Gun Boy. You're so full of toothpaste. I'm not dying so you can have a friggin' night fight! Pretty much annoyed at his life and he's trying to find some enjoyment seeing the world end. Also having a real life gun gives him a lot of power here. <laughs> Well, we defeat him and let him lie unconscious as we head to the top. But we see Ryoji fused with their next avatar becoming... That is what I am. I guess it's a horror game now. And thus begins the final fight, which is so incredibly long. It changes between all the arcana saying... The arcana is the means by which all is revealed. Changing its typing, but after slowly whittling down each health bar... Doing it. I'm doing it! Let's get it. The time has come. 
Good thing I'm playing this on an official PS2. So eventually after dying like 10 times and having to deal with Akihiko being an idiot who attacked every time Moonless Gown was up with Reflex Eddy attack, we win, but it's like, lol, okay. And gets back up, summoning Nyx anyway, which splits open the moon and the device starts killing people. However, us blasting some Avril Lavigne on the headphones transports our mind to Igor who goes, look at all those weird NPCs you made friends with. They're giving you all their power. Oh, not Kenji. Maya? Wells, Wells, Wells. And he gives us the power of the universe. Yeah, all right, mate. As we ascend like a helium balloon into the device to use our friend's power as the Burning Bread song plays one final time, where we do a final attack, defeating Nyx by slightly overcooking some toast. And we win. Congratulations. We shall meet again someday. Now you won't. And so it's now the 3rd of March and the gang don't really remember everyone. Not I guess at least. And you can talk to all the rank 10 people like Yukari and Mitsuru and also... Wait, the teacher's office? Oh my god! Maya! Hi, how are you? Would you like a seat? Not gonna lie, this is kind of hilarious. This is what you get for playing Final Fantasy XIV with a stranger. And so on graduation, oh, oh. Mitsuru remembers the promise and so does everyone as they rush to the rooftop where we await in Igus' lap who says, look, your friends are here and that she will be there to protect us. We do feel a bit sleepy and close our eyes as the game ends. So yeah. That's sure an ending to a 60 hour game. Okay, so Persona 3 playing it after 4 and 5, it feels kinda basic. Mostly with the gameplay as a lot of the systems feel more refined in the later entries. Like the combat, it just feels quite minimal in its features here. I mean also with the free time and the pacing, it just feels so unbalanced. With no male party members to talk to, and all the girls you can only talk to once half the game is over. And even then you can barely do anything at night, rendering half the free time kinda useless in my opinion. However, I will say there is quite a strong motif of death. I mean Akinari literally gets Thanos snapped right in front of you. I could feel all the emotion there, especially with I guess is Link, and I can see why a lot of people love this game. Me, however, I'm just waiting for a remake, because if they can improve all that non-story aspect, I can see myself really loving this game. And now I'd like to give a special thank you to all my patrons throughout this journey. You can join them if you want with a link in the description, which gives you high quality thumbnail art or your name in the credits. And so it's finally over. Or is it? No, I, I don't think it is, because apparently, uh, you die in the end. Yeah. Wasn't clearly shown, but you die. You're gone, Benito. You used up your life force to turn into a door to seal Nyx away forever. What the sweet holy heck, a door? Where is that explained in? The answer? An entire epilogue story section that is separate to the main game that a lot of people don't like? Does that mean I have to make a video talking about it? <laughs> Sorry, but you'll just have to wait. Trojan, Ramses, Magnum, Sheik! And a big cheesy thank you to my patrons, including Commitimus Crime, Pox of Sin, Gerardo Cruz Alvarez, John Porter Gill, Master Pro, Nira, and Worker B. Also, well, is that Persona 3 the answer? 